Hey guys, back with another video, and today is a different video. Um, so, what's going on? Basically, I want to start a series um, on every Friday. Uh, it's kind of like a talk show where I discuss my opinions on, um, on various topics. And this might mostly be on tech, because, you know, I love to talk about tech. However, I can also go into other topics, so that's not a problem. Um, so I want to do this every Friday, however, because of schoolwork, I might not be able to do it some weeks, so I will uh, let you know about any cancellations on episode. But for now, let's um, get on with the first episode. The first thing I would like to talk about is the Tesla solar panels. So basically for the people who don't know, Tesla has just launched their solar panels, which are basically tiles on the roof that are in different different um, styles. And each tile uh, has, a solar, so has solar cells in them. And they kind of look um, immersed into your uh, conventional roof. So you don't really see them stand out like the conventional solar panels. And this is quite a great thing that a Tesla has done. Um, because they're kind of making it easier for a user to to um, put on their roof. As well as keep their roof uh, the same way as it was before. So it still looks like a normal roof. And it's difficult to tell that you actually do have a solar panel on your roof. I mean, for Tesla, I think it's a great step ahead as they want to keep everything zero emissions. And even though charging was kind of, you could say, um, full of emissions, because obviously to create the electricity, you need to, in, there are various methods that involve um, pollution. And now that now through the introduction of their solar panels, you can just charge your um, charge your vehicle or power your house uh, through green energy so yeah that's a good thing so the best thing about these tiles are that they are different styles so basically you can have your own unique style of Tesla solar roofs than someone else and differentiate it uh, to keep it kind of customized and different and if you really look towards the future, I think this is what we need. We need something that um, doesn't make us give up so much. I mean, I can understand if someone doesn't want to put solar panels just because it doesn't look that nice on top of your roof. However, even though you should still put solar panels even though it doesn't look good because, you know, you want to reduce your carbon footprint. This also kind of leads me to a documentary I was watching, maybe you know it, Before the Flood um, by National Geographic and you can kind of see how Leonardo DiCaprio kind of goes around the world, explores this problem as a normal man, understanding what is going on and trying to um, help uh, reduce the, the pollution in our world and kind of promote and uh, promote uh, green energy and pro help um, push towards a cleaner life for the future generations. Germany will be operating the first zero emissions hydrogen train which is basically like a Tesla train you could say and it's it's really great that companies are kind of working hard towards removing emissions. The next topic I'd like to go to is the Google Home. So Google has recently released their Google Home which is basically the Google Assistant in your house uh, integrating with the current technology you might have or might purchase in the future and it's kind of like the Amazon Echo with Alexa as your personal assistant and it's really interesting to see what these companies are kind of doing to kind of make things easier for you and this is this is going to increase laziness for sure but um 
I also kind of have another perspective where it kind of feels like these companies might be wanting to do this to collect data because the microphones are always on. That means that they're always recording your voice or any other any voice um, talks in um, in the house, and this means that it's kind of invading your privacy if they collect that data and maybe uh, give them to the government or something like NSA. You never know. So it's kind of you know at the same time this is like amazing technology, but also kind of dangerous to use especially uh, Google's home because Google has many cases where it kind of invades into your privacy so just know maybe Siri also releases or should I say Apple releases a Siri home or something like that and it's Apple stick and I would be interested as a Apple user to see what they do to integrate technology in in the house and the next thing we have here is MacBook Pro and I think most of you have heard of the new MacBook Pro being launched and yeah I think I, I like it it's a nice design they have really done uh, a good thing on the on the with the touch bar and with the keyboard kind of reducing which helps reducing the, the thickness and also the weight of the the whole device and it's a really cool piece of technology now with the touch bar especially as it kind of increases functionality but uh, I'm also happy at the same time they didn't make the whole keyboard digital because I still like those key sounds so it's nice to always have that click mechanical click now the Mac Pro has four uh, Thunderbolt ports and for some this seems to be a problem and I kind of see what you're what you're saying like you can't even connect your iPhone without a adapter and that's kind of pathetic from Apple I mean at least they should have at least added a maybe a, a single USB or maybe a, a lightning port because even the headphones you get with your new iPhone 7 can't be used and does that mean you have to carry your old one and your new one or I don't know how it will work because I see Apple's courage part isn't really playing a role now in in the Apple MacBook Pro. However, I also see why they didn't do it because they want to keep it open with the auxiliary cord for other consumers. But if they've already changed their uh, if they've already changed their iPhone and removed the auxiliary cord, they should keep it consistent in all of their devices. Also, I'm curious to see what's happening with iPad because now with the new MacBook Pro, I mean, the iPad Pro doesn't really seem that useful anymore. Even though the prices are high, the iPad Pro still has a high price itself and isn't that functional to be honest in in that set, in such a big size. And it's kind of targeting a really niche market. So let's see what they do. I was hoping that they would refresh this this year since they refreshed like all of their products this year but uh, nothing this year so until next year also the PS4 Pro is now gonna be launched um, or it's being launched because I've already seen a couple of videos on unboxings and just checking out the PS4 Pro and I don't know how excited someone should really be because this really just feels like a response to Microsoft's Xbox One S and I don't know what PlayStation's plans are for next year with the PS5 or something because I feel like um, that Microsoft is going to gain the advantage with their new Project Scorpio um, console and now that PS4 Pro has just caught on up to Xbox One S it will be difficult to say that PlayStation will be inventing something new anytime soon. Also, another interesting device, and it's been really hot at the moment. It's called the Xiaomi Mi Mix, if I'm correct. And it's one of the best bezel-less phone out there, or not the best, if not the best. Um, and it's, it's, it looks really good. 
with zero bezels and there's only such a minimum um, bar at the bottom but it's a really attractive design and I really hope that this comes to like other manufacturers like maybe Apple and Samsung even though it is yeah, predicted I could say for the Apple iPhone 8 and yeah it's really nice to see these designs which are kind of going to all only screen instead of going to more bezels and less screen but um, very interesting design Xiaomi and I must give you some credit for that uh, the last topic for this episode I want to kind of go over in the US election and this is kind of a kind of a, a difficult topic to talk about because it's quite debatable and there's a lot of people who have their own opinions however um, I just want to say goodbye to Obama and I think he, did, he was a really good uh, president but um, and I don't think the next four years might be able to match his last four or even eight years but um, be smart and just vote for whoever you think it is and or whoever you think should be the next president and um, yeah what else should I say just don't vote Trump <laughs> simple as that <laughs> just don't vote Trump so that's gonna be it for this episode I uh, hope you like this episode and maybe you like the series as well so subscribe to see the next episode and other tech videos coming up soon um, check out my social network links in the description below and yeah, just let me know if you want me to talk about something in the next episode I'll, uh, see you then and don't forget to like of course see ya